right, guys, so I got my boxes drawn now. There's three of them. Those are the actual limits, and we want to go in and start to do some labeling. Before we do that, I'm just going to fade these uh, images to the back. I fade them out a little bit. Sorry, not not fade them back. But uh, so let's just go open that because it'll make it a little easier to see what we're working on there. So we're going to just grab those images and come up here to our properties. And we're going to, we should have a fade. I like to put them at about 65. Okay, and then we can reload that. All right, so now they're faded. Our boxes stand out a little better. Now you'll you'll notice a couple things here, just to point out for for the guys that are learning. And your mapping limits don't have to be rectangular. So here we're kind of following this parking area, offset of that parking area. Um, that the engineer asked for a little pop out here, and I'll just show you. I'm a little confused. I would think the pop out would be right here at the street. Um, he's got it down by this house. Now there may be a reason for that, uh, or it could be that he just goofed up. So uh, we're going to check with him. We'll ask him about this little pop-out. Uh, but that's one reason why you do a mapping limits exhibit, right? Let's get those questions answered. Okay, so what we want to do now is we're going to figure out what scale we need to be, and then we're going to do some uh, labeling. So to get our scale figured out, we're going to jump in here and make our viewport active. We're going to do a zoom extents. Okay, I'm going to do a dView twist on this. Um, I'm just do a 90. Uh, something's funky here. Let me try that again. Uh, we're going to do 90. Alright. Okay, so north is now over here. Um, and that's not what I want. I actually want north the other direction. So let's do D view. Let's try 270. Alright, now north is over here, which is what I want. Okay, and what I'd like is to not have black space if I can. So let's try, uh, we're going to go zoom 1 over 50. Uh, that's way too close, so zoom over 1 over 100. Uh, Alright, that's getting better, but not quite, so let's try uh, zoom 1 over 120. Alright, that's getting pretty close, that's almost perfect. Oh man. Let's try zoom 1 over 130. Alright, so that's that's pretty good there. I'm going to have some black space no matter what I do. I'm actually going to go zoom 1 over 150. That'll give me some room for some labeling. Okay. Now what I could do is I could pull in this viewport. Um, I could pull that viewport in and that would actually leave me some room for some other notes. I don't think I'm going to need to do that. Mm. Hmm. I don't think I'm going to need that for now, so for now I'm just going to leave it like this. Okay, we can run a quick plot preview so you can see what this looks like. Okay, so that's what it looks like. Okay, so now we know we're, uh, we're at 1 to 150 on our scale, so that will help us when we're doing our multi-liters and other stuff like that. So let's go ahead and... Uh, First thing we're going to do is put some dimensions on. Okay, so I just I'm going to just put some aligned dimensions on here. Okay, this will just help the engineer. Uh, let's see here. This will help the engineer uh, kind of figure out what we're mapping. So I'm just looking for the scale on this dimension here. Overall scale. There we go. So we're at 150, okay, and uh, we just want to put this on the right layer. So we're going to put it on survey text. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Um, so that looks good. So we're going to throw a couple more of those on here. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Looks like I didn't get that one quite in the right spot. Okay, and then we're just going to match properties on that, on those dims. Okay. And uh, we can actually show these to the nearest foot. So let's do that. Select similar. And let's see. We're going to just put these to the nearest foot. Okay. Uh, I also... Let's put a foot tick on here. So we're going to put as a suffix, we're going to just put the foot tick. Okay. Um, and we'll do the same thing on these other uh, boxes. Since that's rectangular, we're only, we're only going to do two dimensions on this one. guys watch me do that one. Alright, so then I just want to add some multi-leaders uh, with just a few notes to kind of clarify the limits for the engineer. So, for example, we're going to put one here and we're going to say uh, limit is the center line of Encina Avenue. Okay, so that's just a little note there for the engineer. Okay, we're going to just grab that and let's see, we want to set the layer survey text and then we want our uh, scale to be 150. Okay. Alright, um, then we're going to just add a couple more of these multi-leaders here. Okay, so I'll put one over here. This is just some notes to try and help the engineer understand what we're mapping. Okay, so we're going to say limit extends just beyond building corner. Okay. Then we're going to copy this guy because we got another uh, center line limit here. This is a little bit tricky because no matter what I do, this leader is going to have to cross a line probably. Uh, unless I rotate at 90, which I really don't want to do. Okay, and that's uh, the center line of Conejo Avenue. Okay, I might move this one to, to try and prevent that overlap. So, okay guys, I'm going to pause the video, finish up my notes here, and then, then we'll take a final look at this. All right, guys, so I got my labeling done. Uh, I did rotate a couple of these labels uh, so they don't cross the lines. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and uh, select all my multi-leaders, and we're going to mask those since we've got them on top of some imagery. So we'll say use background mask and use the drawing color. Okay, so let's go take a look at this on the sheet. All right, so you can see I got to adjust some of these labels. So it uh, looks like this one's got to come down a little bit. So let's go see if we can hug this a little. Uh, yeah, I don't love that, but it that'll work. <laughs> All right, so uh uh, that looks pretty good. So purpose here, we're just going to say uh, the purpose of this exhibit is to show the topographic mapping limits. Proposed survey of La Loma Junior High School. Okay, and then surveyor notes. Um, So I don't, I don't know that I'm going to have a bunch of surveyor notes on this. 
I think we're pretty good without surveyor notes. So we're just going to say surveyor notes none. Okay. And uh, we'll save that and let's run us a little plot preview, see what this looks like. There it is. Uh, I think it looks really nice. Uh, we got to update this information here. Let's do that real quick. Okay, so uh, this is going to be uh, proposal number 20-58, and it is, hmm, this is La Loma Junior High School in Modesto. It is November. Okay. So I think this is looking pretty good. I like it. I think it's a thing of beauty. Uh, it's much better than that engineer sketch we got, right? So let's close that and go ahead and print it. And just save it to that same folder as the drawing. Sometimes you have more than one sheet. And uh, we'll see what this PDF looks like. Uh, there you go. Uh, I think it looks good. Uh, pretty clear, easy to read, and we can do, we can have some back and forth with the engineer. Uh, you know, if I wanted to clean this up a little bit, I could rotate these labels 90 degrees. Uh, that, that's probably it. I'll probably do that, and I'll reposition them. Uh, but I think this looks, uh, this looks pretty good, and it'll communicate the intent. All right, guys, now you know how to put together a mapping limits exhibit for your proposals. Appreciate you watching. That video went a little bit long, so thanks for hanging in there. And, uh, yeah, we'll catch you on some more videos.